All right, welcome back to the Tech Shack to another quick little one take video. My last uh, tour videos have gotten away from the traditional format of actually showing the hardware and, and what I use. They've been more about like this is the building. So this video is going to kind of rectify that, go through my workstation and the server rack down there. And Parker's hard at work over here. Say hey, Parker. All right, well, let's get this going. I screwed you up? Is my fault? No, you just made it easy. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> let's get this one going. So let's start with my new workstation. This past summer, Socket 2011 was finally pried from my hands, at least as my daily driver, and I went to a Ryzen system. Now, I never would have bought this case new, but it came sealed as part of a bundle I brought up a Facebook Marketplace listing. The original side panel was acrylic, which I replaced with a tempered glass panel and replaced the included Molex powered fans with PWM fans that move way more air. Now, speaking of moving air, that was only possible after I dremeled out the front vents that were just for design and actually closed off. And after looking around at prices online, I would have never bought this case if it wasn't practically free. The DIY PC and Deepcool brands both offer better cases for less money. This case only met the minimum standard after all my modifications, so I would absolutely stay away from this case. On the inside of the PC, I have an Asus ROG Strix B550 motherboard, a Ryzen 5800X3D, 32 gigabytes of T-Force 3200 memory tuned to 3600 MHz, all stable up to four passes of mem test by the way, Soyo RX 5700XT, two one terabyte crucial P3 NVMe SSDs, um, the CPU itself came in on a trade-in. The cooler was the RGB stock cooler from a 3900X. A while back I did a 3900X system with a custom loop and the CPU's included cooler was just sitting on the shelf and it looks really nice in this system honestly. The power supply is also part of the same bundle I got the case with and if it was an amazing deal I wouldn't have bought it. The displays, I have two matching Samsung ultra wides pushing 3440 by 1440 at 75 hertz and a Samsung 27 inch 4K 60 hertz display in the corner for content consumption and to monitor the security system on the property. This is probably the most powerful workstation I've had in a long time. And considering most of these parts either were Facebook marketplace deals or came in from customers on a trade-in, I have actually less than $300 out of pocket in this entire system. All right, so along the way to my server rack, you're gonna find this AMD Mini ITX system running clear OS, acting as my internet firewall gateway. Um, I'll be doing another standalone video on clear OS soon. So the one thing I wanna mention now, if you want to install it on an AMD APU based system or really any PC with Radeon graphics for that matter, you're gonna to have to use a text-based installer. Um, it also prefers to be installed from CD, so if you're using a USB drive, you're going to have to make sure it's written in ISO mode since it expects to be you know, installed from a read-only CD. And you also have to make sure you're using a USB 2 port since the USB 3 drivers don't install until you're downloading updates. All of these things I had to figure out as I went along since every other mini PC I've used previous was a small form factor Intel-based system with a CD drive, I never had to, to deal with this. Now, I don't plan on running an AMD box much longer for my ClearOS server anyway. I plan on replacing it with an AliExpress N100 mini PC, so expect a dedicated video sometime soon on that. All right, so now onto the rubbish rack itself. The top T3600 was my daily driver for the longest time, and it's now basically a headless data recovery workstation. It's running an Intel Xeon 2690 V1, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabyte boot SSD, and two four terabyte HSGT Ultra Star drives in RAID 1. I added a USB 3 10 gigabit controller to the top by four PCIe slot for the NVMe puck dock, and the SATA dock uses the built-in USB 3 5 gigabit controller. I added a 2.5 gigabit NIC, and it dual boots Windows 11 Pro and Parted Magic. Now the main tool I use on this PC is this top secret file manager. Now this thing is not just a god mode file manager, but like if god took steroids. This file manager can mount Linux and Mac partitions in Windows. It can mount encrypted drives if you have the key and it can even brute force some older basic encryption types. And when it does the transfer, it ignores and removes all permissions 
and encryption. It verifies the file integrity, which also helps me maintain client data privacy since I never have to actually view the files to do this. The tool even sees drives that Windows cannot mount or causes Windows to be unstable. If I was to list everything this software can do, this would be a three hour video. There are agents in the field working with this software that have zero um, clue how powerful it actually is. And how did I get this software? I actually helped work on the project with my previous employer. Well, I can't tell you which one it was or the name of the software. It was definitely one of these employers. Maybe. The bottom server is a T5810 with an E5 2684V2, 64 gigabytes of RAM, an RX 570 that was part of the bundle I bought the case and power supply and all that other stuff in. I, it's mostly just for transcoding anyway. 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. The um, two six terabyte HSGT spinning rusts in RAID one, and another two and a half gigabit NIC. Um, it just does Plex, Active Directory, a basic NAS. Most of my home lab stuff is actually runs on apps on the Clear OS box. So other than Plex, this one's mostly for business. I'm very much considering replacing both of these with those little trash can Ryzen 5700U mini PCs. And once that happens, I will be finally off of socket 2011. It's been a long addiction, but I'm finally ready to break the cycle. All right, and in my other tour videos, for anybody who noticed these little copper hooks, those have little wire whips for each um, workbench's displays. Both workbenches have display cables for the monitors, USB extensions for the keyboard and mouse dongles so I don't leave them in the computers, and two and a half gigabit networking. The blue bench has HDMI and DisplayPort, and the white bench has VGA and HDMI for some of my legacy devices that I work on since I am primarily an MSP and I work on a lot of older office PCs more than you know than the nice fancy stuff you see me posting on YouTube. But that is it for this low quality one take video and I will see you guys next time.